Hey folks, Steve Bird here. Welcome back. I just wanted to touch on something real quick that's uh, solar power related. Um, a lot of folks, when they hear me being critical or, I want to say negative, but let's say realistic about um, some green agendas that we see floating around today, they're like, I don't understand, but aren't you solar? Yeah, I'm solar. Guess what? I actually live on solar. And that's why I think some of these things just don't make sense because I know the realities of it. For example, let me paint the picture of, of our world here uh, and, and then we'll go from there. You know, we have uh, uh, solar power that runs through a Solark 12K that charges uh, two banks of batteries and that serves us pretty well. And we easily can produce uh, from our solar what the average household consumes per day on a nice sunny day in the summer. So let's let's take the summer for example. In the summer you got nice long days, lots of sunshine. If it does storm, it's usually a thunderstorm that comes and then it goes and the sun comes right back out. Well in the summer we can pretty much crank our air conditioning, you know, all day long. Um, you do whatever you want to do, do laundry, run all the appliances, and your batteries stay topped off at 100% because we've got enough uh, input from the solar panels to keep the batteries topped off uh, and still power everything we need. Sounds great, but then the sun goes down. What happens when the sun goes down? Well, now there's no solar power coming in from your panels and you're on your batteries. Well, at that point, I kind of look at it as solar power and being off grid as being the Dave Ramsey of energy. Whereas grid power is the credit card of energy. What I mean by that is Dave Ramsey says don't buy something until you get the cash to spend. And that's basically how being off grid solar is. If I don't have the energy already in my bank, I, you know, it, I can't use it. So when you look at it that way when it's when you're on the grid and you can just turn everything you want on and deal with the bill when it comes at the end of the month that's all fine and all but when you're relying on solar and now you're got you're, you're into the nighttime and you're on your stored energy the excess that you stored from the day that you did that day's uh, production that you didn't use all of a sudden you're like well i guess we can't run our air conditioners in the dark because if we get the batteries too low the generator will kick on and that'll burn into our propane you got to think about things like that sure we could run that we could run the air conditioners 24 7 in the summer but if it got into our batteries too far in the night it would fire up our generator to top the batteries back off and then we'd be burning propane to run our you know there's just a lot to think about it's not the be all end all solar is one key to the puzzle so now let's let's take a large city for example and let's let's create this in our mentally create this mega solar farm somewhere we'd probably have to destroy thousands and thousands of acres to far, of farmland that you used to use to feed the people to, to set that up uh, in the summer when those panels produced a lot of power and supplemented those homes during the day what would they do at night you know I can't mentally you know picture what the battery system would have to look like for a city the size of Los Angeles for everyone in that city to be able to run anything they wanted 24 7 have you ever noticed it's always those cities the people that live in the cities that tell you you shouldn't be using too much energy that leave all the lights in the city on 24 hours a day which you can see you can literally see them from space at night <laughs> but anyway I digress how many of those same people that want to push green energy would be willing to turn their air conditioners off in August in the south probably not many so welcome to reality now, oh but you can augment it with wind I look outside right now I don't see a twig moving now there's sometimes that we get some good strong winds around here that'll you know blow your your neighbors trampoline into your yard but that's you know few and far between if we had wind it would be to supplement if we had wind energy it would be to supplement during storms when there's not much sunlight but on a regular basis, it, it wouldn't be enough to rely on. It definitely wouldn't be enough to keep your keep your power going at night when you're no longer getting getting sunshine. So what do you do? You got to have alternate sources. You see right here behind me here is a wood burner stove. Over here on the wall is a propane heater. Uh, in the in the summer or in the winter, on a 
a brilliantly sunny day, we can run electric fire, our electric fireplace and all kinds of other stuff. You can run electric heat as long as the sun's out, but then it's back to the same thing at night when the sun goes away. You're back to the Dave Ramsey looking in your little, his, he has little envelopes of cash. Okay, these are for my groceries. This is for, and that's kind of how we are, you know, with, with power. With, okay, we got this much power. How, how do we want to spend it? What do we want to use it on tonight? Um, and I don't think most people that push or, let's say, willingly go along with uh, some of the drastic green energy agendas really understand what it would be like to live under green energy. Most of them live in big cities with big, big power plants. Now, let's take that a step farther. You know, you got a state like California that, uh, you know, they're banning chainsaws and lawnmowers and weed eaters and generators. A state that can't keep its power grid on is uh, banning generators. I uh, can't make it up. But anyway, we'll take, take us like what happened in Mayfield, Kentucky uh, recently with the uh, tornadoes there. Uh, that's some pretty serious devastation. And they are still, to this day, finding people in the rubble. And imagine if all the possible rescuers that you had had to use electric chainsaws, but there was nowhere to plug those chainsaws into. And they could only use electric vehicles to bring in the supplies needed and all that kind of thing. Uh, but there's no grid to plug into because the tornadoes blew it away. And solar wouldn't even help you in that case, because if it'll blow your whole house away, it's going to take your solar panels too. So you can't put all your eggs in one basket, you know, and that's one of the lessons I've learned living off grid is that the solar is just one piece of the energy puzzle. It's not the answer. Neither would wind be the answer, you know. Um, we do what we do and it, it suits our lives. We, we were, were more than willing um, to, to put the investment into solar power for numerous reasons, um, and one of which was for our own energy security. Another was because we didn't want to cut trees down and run a half, half mile of power lines only to give the power company right away across the middle of our farm, uh, and which they, 40 feet underneath the lines, it's, that's their right away forever once you put that stuff up. We had a lot of reasons for it. A lot of reasons that maybe other people aren't interested in and don't care about, uh, which would make them not quite as willing to live with within the limitations of true green energy living. So anyway, I uh, hope you got a little something out of that. Um, if you ever hear me being a skeptic of a green energy program, uh, it's 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 from my real world experience. You know, on cars, for example, before I go, real quick, uh, I used to, when we first put our solar up, I thought, I'm going to get an electric car. You know, not, not to drive around as a political statement, carbon shaming people, but because if I could charge my own car with my own solar power, I could literally drive to work for free. Now, I have a pretty long drive to work because I live in a fairly remote place, so range would be an issue for me. But then I started looking into what it takes to charge an electric car. And uh, the average Tesla uses 34 kilowatts per 100 miles. Your average home uses 28.9 kilowatts per day. And on an average day, you know, we easily can pull in, you know, 30 kilowatts uh, with, with our solar. And uh, once we get that expanded, that'll be double. But still, that's just for 100 miles. That's a massive amount of power that we would be pulling from our, our solar production to charge a car that that's you know when you when you look at it in those terms uh it makes the tesla look very expensive to drive and takes you know fifty thousand dollars worth of solar power to charge to charge it up enough to drive to work not that they would cost that every day but that, that's what you'd have to invest in a system powerful enough to charge that car and then there'd be nothing less for your left for your home i could be into an electric vehicle if it was uh both, you know, if you had the ability to plug it in and drive, I guess like that Chevy Volt was, but I'm not sure they were ever, ever actually that good, but just something that, you know, maybe if it had an onboard, a you know, little liquid cooled, uh, efficient generator, uh, so it could charge itself when need be and not be beholden to the grid. But, but to see, there's, there's where we go the, back to the grid and be beholden. It seems 
all of these little programs and projects that the government pushes for green energy, it's all to get people more connected and more reliant on a system. It's not standalone projects. It's not for people to be energy independent or for the nation to be energy independent. It's to be dependent. If you can't drive your car because they shut your power off, that's a pretty big deal. You know, I jokingly say maybe that's why California wants to mandate electric-only cars so that nobody has the range to escape the state. You know, you can't you run out of run out of batteries before you cross the border and then you're stuck. But all all jokes aside, you know, the government green energy programs seem to be pushing people into uh, more dependence on a system and a supply chain. And that is exactly what people like me are trying to get away from. So, there's a difference between political green and being energy independent and being as free from the system as you can. So anyway, hope you got something out of this. Uh, hope to see you all again real soon. And uh, have a good one.